This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Woodmer here, along with the Mark Weber. Dub them ease. And welcome into the Onside Kick here on Most Valuable Podcast, your professional football podcast, which we talk NFL and we might talk XFL in the future because the AAF or the Alliance um, is a little bit dead right now. But we got some signees. The one big one I had to tell Dave about was uh, his boy Gilbert uh, or Garrett Gilbert there of the go. Apollos got assigned by the Cleveland Browns. So he'll now be he gets backing to be a up backup. Baker. He'll be backing up Baker Mayfield. There are a couple other Alliance players that got signed also. But we got a jam-packed show for you guys today talking NFL draft. Before we get to the draft, we're, what, two weeks away, I believe, from the draft right now? Yeah, sounds about right. This week, next week, we'll have our last mock draft. This weekend, we're recording the Most Valuable Podcast live mock draft. With Can't wait. Most of the guys here from MVP, most of the crew. And then, obviously, we'll have my full seven-round mock draft on the website. This is kind of where we hit you guys with a bunch of mock drafts right before everything. But before I get into what we're talking about today... Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. We redid our tiers, bronze, silver, and gold memberships. You get a ton for your, or you get really bang for your buck. Discord server, MVP podcast a month early. You also get mock drafts a week early. So this week, patrons are going to be able to see Mark and I's mock draft a week before we record it next week, next Tuesday. But Mark Jam Pack Show talking about Dwayne Haskins, talking about Josh Rosen, will he be traded? Talking about the Bengals, will they draft a quarterback? It's a quarterback heavy show. But the first thing I gotta ask you, and I'm kind of throwing you a curveball. I didn't uh what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't set you up for this. Did you see the Jets new uniforms, by the way? Oh yeah, I did. What were your thoughts on those? Because uh, most people did not like them. They're not terrible, but they're definitely not good. Really? Am I the only one that likes them? To I me, think they're kind of cool. The, and this kind of is what a lot of people's complaints are. Mm-hmm. They just look super generic. Yeah, I could see that. They look generic, and it also I looks... I just like the retro feel that they're trying to go with. See, but I feel... And they do have a little bit of retroness to it, but I feel like they didn't do it well. Okay. So you're saying they're doing it the, the wrong way, the bad way. It's just... They're not terrible jerseys. They're just not mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, I... I when I saw them, I showed Dave, and I'm like, those are kind of cool. They're the not the black best. one is the best. I didn't see all I saw was the dark green, the dark green one mm-hmm. and the pure white one. Yeah, um, were the ones I saw, and I like now that it has the jets across the helmet, kind of like the. But they're old still days. not using their logo. No, they're their not. Logo is not used logo. anywhere. I think they changed their logo because on NFL.com it kind of looked they different. Did. Yeah, they changed um, it than before. But let's get into our first topic. Let's talk Dwayne Haskins, and the reason why we are talking. Dwayne Haskins, is he could be falling in the draft. And this comes from the quote that I'm going to use comes from Lance Zerline, an NFL draft analyst from NFL.com. He sent out a tweet. This would have been two days ago, so Friday, I believe. He said, after speaking with a few different teams, I definitely get the feeling that Dwayne Haskins' draft stock was more media-created than team-driven. I see Haskins falling on draft day, and I think the chances are increasing that he is not the second quarterback off the board. And with me, before I throw it to you, Mark, I agree with this, but I don't agree with it totally. Because will he fall? Technically, because he's not going to be the second quarterback off the board. I think Drew Locke is rising, and Drew Locke will become that second quarterback off the board but I don't think Dwayne Haskins is going to be a Johnny Manziel situation or a Geno Smith situation. He's not going to fall all the way to 23 mm-hmm. or out of the first round like both Geno Smith and Manziel did. What are your thoughts with Dwayne Haskins and can how far will he fall when we get to the draft? I don't think he's really going to fall that far because I still think he is, even though I think he's probably a better option than Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. I've... I'm willing to say Kyler Murray probably gets drafted before yeah. uh, Dwayne Haskins. I don't think that Drew Locke uh, should be drafted before Dwayne Haskins. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I just 
I just don't I don't like it. I don't see it. There's always somebody though that teams fall in love with post combine. Mm-hmm. Nobody, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but very few people were talking about Drew Locke in the first round until post combine. Uh, and now with teams having nothing really to do but watch game tape and watch uh, their uh, the pro days and everything like that, suddenly people are starting to kind of fall in love with him a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, we, we have to remember this is when you smoke screen this is mm-hmm. when you lie this is when you tell uh the opposite of what you really want or you're like the cardinals and you don't say anything like you say some to their stuff, own detriment yeah you're like you're saying some stuff but you're not giving any indication of what you may do mm-hmm. uh the only thing they're doing is killing their quarterback's confidence yeah uh well he may be our guy well he's our guy right now yeah exactly so with Dwayne haskins i just i don't get I understand that he's not that exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not Kyler Murray, and he kind of became QB1 by default for yeah. a little bit, especially when we all were like, well, Kyler Murray's going to play baseball. Yeah. Uh, he became the default number one guy. Mm-hmm. And I still think he's a really good quarterback. He is not that athletic, so like I know that's kind of a knock because that's really what people want now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Look at literally every quarterback who's been drafted in the past like three, four years. We like mobile quarterbacks at this point. Uh, so he doesn't really have that. But beyond that, the only other real true knock that I have against him is the experience. But we draft quarterbacks with only one year of experience all the time. Mm-hmm. He's got some kind of mechanic issues, um, not necessarily in his motion, but in some of those uh, kind of throwing mechanics. He, he's got some weird things there. But those are all things that should be able to be fixed. Yeah. It's not a Tim Tebow thing either. And I always bring up Tim Tebow because he was the one where... That was unfixable. It it was the jankiest of where he would start here at the chest, do a complete like circle motion. It's like a baseball pitcher. To where it was like a, oh, by the time you get the ball up to throw, the cornerback or safety knows where you're going. Dwayne Haskins' issues are more Mm -hmm. after he throws the ball. Yeah. uh, That he has some weird things in... um, that's not going to be a huge issue for a team. Mm-hmm. The problem for for most of these teams, though, is if he does go too high, he's like I said, he's not mobile, so that can be an issue. Mm-hmm. So maybe actually him falling back a little bit could be a good thing because yeah. he could go to a team that has a better offensive line. And that's why for me, I feel like when we're talking about him falling, yet again, I'm going to reiterate this: he's still he top is, fifteen. Pick. He is not going to. He could even still be a top. I think he'll he be is, a top ten. Pick. To me, he's still a top ten. Yeah. pick. It's just that 15 is like that last spot yeah. where someone needs a quarterback. I still think he's going in the top 10. And the reason why I say that is he's not going to be like Geno Smith. He's not falling out of the first round. And I feel like what's going to happen is this. We had him like like Lance Zerline's tweet said, more media driven than team driven. Ever since the draft process started, we've had him pegged at number six. Like he has been... At number six to the New York Giants because the Raiders never showed big interest. Like, yeah, they did, they're going to do their due diligence and work with all the quarterbacks. But we didn't get a sense of they really like him. We never thought that he was going to go number one. We never thought that he had, like, he wasn't, if Kyler mm-hmm. Murray went to baseball, Dwayne Haskins was not a pick that the Cardinals would make over a Quinn and Williams, and over a Nick Barsa. arguably both those teams do not need quarterbacks. Exactly. Um, Kyler Murray's just different because of the Cliff Berry uh, connection and how Cliff Berry said he liked Kyler Murray a lot. And Kingsbury. then also, yeah, Kingsbury. I said Cliff Berry. Kingsbury um, likes Kyler Murray, plus John Gruden has said how he likes Kyler Murray. So that's what the it, only reason why mm-hmm. we're talking about him going there. I think with Dwayne, though, it's something where the Giants just, like, we don't peg him they into just need the a quarterback. Giant pick. And, and it's they a good spot like because he – it's not that they don't like him. They, uh, I think they're going to they're gonna go with either Drew Locke or Daniel Jones. And their I decision, think there's a good chance they're going to just take a defensive player because well, Kettleman says, I don't give a shit. Well, we take whoever I feel like. And that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. With me, I feel like what the Giants are going to do is if they take a quarterback at six, it's going to be Drew Locke. If they don't, they're going to kind of roll the dice and say, well, mm-hmm. if we don't, we'll take Daniel Jones at 17. Here's the thing about that. People mm-hmm. are all of a sudden, out of nowhere, saying, Drew Locke, no, that's the number two quarterback, yep, not Dwayne Haskins. But here's the thing about that. If our complaint is that Dwayne Haskins 
his draft stock was driven by media, mm-hmm. not by teams. All of a sudden, media is saying, no, 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 Drew Locke is the number two quarterback. Well, I think, That's the exact same situation. But I think that's coming more from like mm-hmm. more from what the what we're seeing with the teams now. More sure, teams but we're are, not really seeing any teams really in love with Drew Locke either. I think the only one we've seen is the Giants, and that's the only one that matters to me. Like Because to me, the Raiders and Cardinals, the only way mm-hmm. they're going quarterback is if they take Kyler Murray— if Kyler Murray doesn't go to either of those teams, someone's going to trade up into the top five to try to get him. And I think at the end of the day, what happens? When it comes to the Giants, they will not take Dwayne Haskins. They either mm-hmm. take, they will either take Drew Lock at six or they're rolling the dice to take um, Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones. And at that's 17. been the one that uh, Drew Lock, I don't think, I have seen very few connections of mm-hmm. Drew Lock and, and New York. The connection I keep seeing for New York is, is Daniel, Daniel Jones. Jones at 17. And that's why I think Dwayne Haskins, mm-hmm. he's going to fall to either one of three teams. He's either going to fall to the Bengals at 11 or either the Dolphins or the Redskins. I'm looking at the mm-hmm. Redskins because we're going to talk about the Redskins a lot this podcast. Although we're Redskins gonna, also, we're rumor talk- has it, are trying to possibly trade for Josh Rosen. Bingo. So, but... If let's say the Cardinals don't trade Josh Rosen mm-hmm. and we get to draft night, see that's the whole thing. Like we're going to talk about the Redskins in the next segment because yep. they've got the big interest in Josh Rosen. Let's say the Cardinals don't trade Josh Rosen. What I could see the Redskins doing because they're one of the mm-hmm. teams that this week is working out Dwayne Haskins. I could see them trading up into the top ten above the Bengals above. The Broncos, because the Broncos are another team that's kind of they sitting take there. One. Yeah. They're sitting there kind of working out these quarterbacks. They're just mm-hmm. working them out, saying, all right, we don't need it, but how, how long are we going to have Joe Flacco? Is Joe Flacco yeah. really the future here? Um, so they've been kind of working out these quarterbacks, too. Plus you got the Lions, smokescreen central, when months ago they said, well, we could take a quarterback. We got Matthew Stafford, but we could still take yeah. a quarterback to be behind him. So... To me, I think Dwayne Haskins kind of goes in that range. Like he's either going to go to the Bengals at eleven, or a team like the mm-hmm. Dolphins or the Redskins trades yeah. up to get him in the I top. I still 10. have a feeling though, with some of this giant stuff, not to harp on it, mm-hmm. is they're be, they've been connected to Drew Locke now. They've been connected to Dwayne uh, or to Daniel Jones. They're kind of not getting connected to Dwayne uh, Haskins. Mm-hmm. It could be very easy for the Giants to be trying very hard right now to say. We're completely fine waiting till 17 to take a quarterback. You don't well, need to trade above us because we're not even going to take one. And we're also talking about the Smoke team. Smokescreen in that case. Well, you're also talking about the team that's like, there's no way we're trading OBJ, and then they trade OBJ. Yeah. They're, it's very, it'd be very easy for them to say, we're completely fine with one of those quarterbacks. Don't worry. We have zero interest in Kyler Murray or Dwayne Haskins. We mm-hmm. don't want one of those guys. You don't need to trade above us at all. And yeah. then maybe they will. Maybe they'll take their pick. And from what I'm seeing just by looking – um, on Google to see what some sources are saying. When you look at Drew Locke, the big thing that comes up is he's going to have a pre-draft visit with the Broncos this week. Um, there's also another one that the mock draft where the Raiders take him. I don't know if the Raiders are going to take him at four. Um, but then when you look at Daniel Jones, the big thing is Giants, 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 Giants. Like, mm-hmm. is he going to be their first-round target? And the thing that's interesting you say don't want to harp on the Giants. I think they're the team we have to harp on because they're the linchpin in this. Like, I was going through starting my mock draft for next week, and in the top six picks, the linchpin is the Cardinals because whatever yep. they do at one affects will the rest obviously of the teams. affect the rest of the draft. That next linchpin is the Giants. What do they do? Do they trade back? Do they take a non-quarterback? Do they go with a quarterback? And how is that going to affect the needy quarterback teams of the Bengals, of the Dolphins, of the Redskins, of the Broncos who are still working out these quarterbacks? So, like, with me, Dwayne Haskins, I don't think he's fallen that far. Like, at the the best I've seen is a slide. Mm-hmm. And there's even an article that I put in our kind of rundown because it was interesting to me is that Trent Dilfer actually talked to Albert um, Beer of SI, and he said, I'll just read the SI article right here, former NFL quarterback and Elite 11 head coach Trent Dilfer told SI's Albert Beer that 
he sees similarities between Ohio State's Dwayne Haskins and Tom Brady, a six-time Super Bowl champion. Dilfer previously worked out with Haskins at his Elite 11 recruiting camp, and here's the exact quote from Dilfer. I thought Dwayne should have waited, but he's the most like Tom Brady of anyone we've had. He sees it, he sees it like Tom. He works like he works at it like Tom. He plays that way. He plays on time with his intellectual process. I don't want to compare anyone to Brady, but he's but that's Tom, exactly what I'm doing. But he's Tom Brady ish. Mm -hmm. What do you think when you hear a quote like that from Trent Dilfer? To me, what I hear is, I really want to get this headline because I want people to pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. Whenever someone's comparing someone to the greatest of all time, the, I'm sorry, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. we, we get one of these constantly of someone being compared to Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, and it's just a throwout. And Trent Dilfer, I'm not trying to you know talk down on Trent Dilfer's skills here, but he's not necessarily seen as one of the scout experts. Mm -hmm. So for him to just go out there and say, yeah, he reminds me of Tom Brady purely because he's going to fall and he's smart mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything. Because if you look at what he's actually saying when he's describing Dwayne Haskins, it was a whole lot of words and a whole lot of no substance being said. See, I think there's a key little bit of piece in there where with me, if I'm – let's say I'm a team mm -hmm. that worked out Dwayne Haskins and I hear this quote. The first thing I do is I go to our scouts and I go to the guys that kind of compile everything and I go, hey, could, how was he on the board? Pull up his board work. Let's go over that because mm -hmm. to me – when he's talking about if you're an about, NFL scout you've already done well, that though. when he's talking about mm -hmm. the process and how he thinks about things and he approaches the game the same way as Tom I go back and I look at the notes we have but, on him from his board work and if that matches up yeah. then I look at it and go okay is he onto something is he not but is there's there no here way that Trent Dilfer knows that over your actual scouts. Mm -hmm. Your scouts have done their homework. They know if he I compares mean, to Tom Brady. I think everybody. Trent Dilfer is just trying to get a, Trent Dilfer is just trying to get a, uh, a headline. I think everybody's the same way. Like, it's all guesswork from everybody. Yeah. But that's but what I let's would Let's be real. Do. Scouts, these are people who get mm -hmm. paid to do it. Some of them suck, sure. But most of them are going to know better than mm -hmm. Trent Dilfer, a guy who just was a quarterback. Now, see, the, the one thing I'll ask you, mm -hmm. does it... Do you take it with a grain of salt that he actually got to well, that he actually worked with Dwayne Haskins at that recruiting camp? Um, I I actually think that makes him more biased because mm -hmm. that's saying this is his guy. He yeah. has an attachment to him. He doesn't care about Kyler Murray or Drew mm -hmm. Locke. He doesn't care about Daniel Jones. He cares about this guy. Mm -hmm. And I think the comparison to whenever somebody falls, people are like, oh, Tom Brady fell, or if they take a quarterback in the third round. There's no reason this guy can't be good. Tom Brady was taken in the sixth round. Mm -hmm. One, Tom Brady was not expected to be at one point a top five pick like Dwayne yeah. Haskins was. And two, Tom Brady is one in a million for a reason. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. Uh, and it's just a slippery slope to do to compare anyone to Tom Brady. Exactly. Even if you want to say, oh, he has the same tools that Tom has, it's a slippery slope. And arguably, a lot of people would say... That's actually kind of an insult to Dwayne Haskins mm -hmm. to say he's a really good guy, like a really good quarterback, if he's got a really good coach and a really good system built around him. Because mm -hmm. even though Tom Brady, I said it just a little bit ago, greatest of all time quarterback, but there's still a lot of people out there who would say, yeah, Bill, but Bill Belichick's, Belichick's was doing it. Yeah. Um, so arguably that could actually be an insult. And the reason why people say that is when Tom – was suspended when Tom was injured. Yeah. The team, team wasn't was just terrible. As good. Like team Matt, was just the like, same. If correct me if I'm wrong, comment section out there. Matt Castle brought them to the playoffs or almost brought them to the playoffs in the year that Tom Brady was injured. Jimmy G got paid big bucks because of what he did in what, three games? And Jacoby Brissett got yeah. traded to a new team because of what he did. I don't think he won that game, but he still played well mm -hmm. with Tom Brady being out. So yeah, with me, I the only thing I would look at that is like if I'm the Giants and I see that, and I'm if Dwayne Haskins is even in my discussion at six, I look back. Okay, what were our notes when he was on the board? We were throwing the intellectual stuff, mm -hmm. like the things that would come into how he prepares game to game. 
Because then I would be like, okay, am I missing something here? Yeah. And I would at least do that due diligence. I just don't with think it. there's any way an NFL team is basing what they do scouting wise off of what Trent Dilfer says. True. It's never one like it's never one guy. Uh and I think they've already done their homework on him mm-hmm. if they want a quarterback. But two, this easily could be we're talking about smoke screens. This mm-hmm. easily could be Trent Dilfer saying, "My guy's starting to fall. The love is coming off of him. His draft mm-hmm. stock's dropping. I'm let gonna me put some love let me put him. this in there. You know, let me put something out there that people are gonna say, Ooh, Tom Brady. We want one of those.' Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna see. Does it say why he was talking to SI? Um, because who doesn't want to talk to Trent Dilfer? No, it doesn't say. Um, it was just saying he was talking to SI's Albert um, Beer. Um, that he sees the similarities in Dwayne Haskins and Tom Brady. But the thing I'll ask you before we move on, is there any final thoughts or things you think we didn't hit with Dwayne Haskins and his possible slide in it's the first It's totally round? possible that he slides, but I do think that a lot of this seems a little conveniently, you know, a lot of this seems very convenient with his fall mm-hmm. and the rise of guys like Daniel Jones. And Drew Locke. And, it's, and Drew Locke can actually be a, a first-round quarterback, but... To me, Daniel Jones is too too much. So I'm mm-hmm. like, you're you're being a little heavy handed. Yeah, you know, you're you're at the poker table and you're like, oh, I got a great hand, everybody. This hand is so good. Whew, I've never seen a card this. I've never seen a you know cards dealt this good before. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, and raise a little bit. Yeah. You know, like you're you're really trying to sell the bluff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I buy it. Yeah, maybe that maybe that's it from the Giants. Maybe they're trying to mm-hmm. sell a little bit of Daniel Jones to maybe get a team that goes, "Hey, well if they like Daniel Jones, why aren't we what did we miss?" and yeah. maybe get a team to like, "Hey, you know, we could use Daniel Jones. We could use a quarterback, but hey, well we got Eli. Let's work a deal out." Like they could use it to maybe trade back at 6. I think it's just a you don't picks? you don't need to trade above us is mm-hmm. what I think they're doing. Saying we want no, so we want have, this guy at 17. They can have their pick of the litter after yeah. Kyler Murray. So nobody had whether it's Dwayne Haskins, whether mm-hmm. it's Drew Locke, you don't need to trade above us. We're not even <laughs> going to take a quarterback. You'll still get him. Which is weird. It's weird only because like the one team I know we've talked about them before, we'll probably mm-hmm. talk a little bit about them next week. The Jets, I think they need to make a trade because they they, they, could, they need mm-hmm. picks in the later round. But rounds. that doesn't mean that the Giants don't make that trade. Exactly. If it's just to say, you guys don't need to trade up because mm-hmm. we're not doing it, and then we trade. Yeah. Look at how secretive the Chicago Bears were when they traded with one Mitch. up. Nobody knew they even met with Mitch because mm-hmm. it was all a big secret. The head coach didn't even know that Ryan Pace was meeting with Mitch because that's how much he well, yeah, wanted it. Because John Fox was going to get canned. He didn't. Well, that's why he didn't know. There's that, but it's also <laughs> they didn't want anybody to know. They made like they made. If I remember the story right, they made him like, uh, you know, really hide his mm-hmm. face and whatever when he was going to that restaurant that they met with. Yeah, you know, it was a big secret. That's what mm-hmm. these GMs are trying to deal with. Because nobody wants the – no one wants to let their hand, their poker hand, be shown, like you were saying. Like, yeah. oh, I got the good hand. I don't want to show my cards before we get to draft night. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think down below. Is this all kind of a smoke screen? Is Dwayne Haskins going to be the second QB off the board? Does he slide? How far does he slide? Let us know what you guys are thinking down below. But, Mark, let's move on into our next discussion, and we're talking quarterbacks in the draft again, but this time a quarterback that is already in the NFL as sophomore quarterback Josh Rosen could be on the move, could be out of Arizona as soon as the draft. I don't know if he gets traded before the draft, but could be traded on draft night. And according to ESPN's own Todd McShay, The Redskins are the most interested in dealing for the 22-year-old quarterback from the Arizona Cardinals. However, I will say, if you do a little Google search, you'll also see that this is from Finns Finns Insider, or the Finns Insider, that the Dolphins are doing their due diligence and have checked in on Josh Rosen. You will also see from... Big Blue View, which is the SB Nation Giants site, that the Giants have checked in. There's a possibility that they could be working on a trade with the 37th pick to try to get Josh Rosen. And there's also 
I believe it's the Brock. Yeah, the Redskins, Giants, Broncos, and Dolphins. So add the Broncos yeah. to if that. If you're a team that needs a quarterback, you've done your homework. Everybody may probably except like the Bengals, mm. except for the yeah. Bengals and the Raiders. They've done at their the very due least. You're gonna pick up the phone and just say, just out of curiosity, what, what's the price? What would it take? Yeah, what's the price? What are you looking for? I just want to know. I'm asking for mm-hmm. a friend. I want to ask you this though, Mark. Mm-hmm. Should the Cardinals trade Josh Rosen? No. They shouldn't trade Josh Rosen. And there's there's a few things. One, Josh Rosen's still a good quarterback who was mm-hmm. in a terrible situation last year. He was destined to fail. You mm-hmm. guys drafted him so that he could fail. Two, uh, teams that draft quarterbacks early tend to continue drafting quarterbacks early. God. If you draft a second one, you're going to draft a third one pretty if, soon, too. If I made a Mark Webber-themed t-shirt, right. that's what would be on it because you say it every single draft. And it season. keeps happening. It keeps <laughs> happening. Finally, it looks like the the Browns are out of the cycle, but mm-hmm. man, were they there for a long time. Anyways, the third thing is, now if you draft a guy like Kyler Murray, obviously you have no reason to have Josh Rosen on your team. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get rid of him. But you have devalued Josh Rosen so much mm-hmm. that a guy you just spent a first-round pick, a high first-round pick last year on, now you're going to get maybe a second if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. And and they even say, you know, in, in quite a few of these articles, like the one about the Washington Redskins, that the team is not going to offer a first-round pick. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so you have devalued him by telling everybody you just drafted this guy and you don't believe in him so much mm-hmm. that you're going to go spend number one overall on to a quarterback. A quarterback. It, it's trash. Look at Jimmy Clausen. Jimmy Clausen is a perfect example. He gets mm-hmm. drafted by Carolina, barely gets to do very much. He's had a terrible team around him. They turn around and they draft Cam Newton, number one overall. The only thing I will say about that, mm-hmm. Cam Newton, very different than Kyler Murray. Correct. Correct, they are. Cam but Newton it's didn't the same have situation. Many questions it's the same Kyler situation. Eh, Cam Newton might have had some questions about I'm, him. Not the Kyler Murray questions. Yeah. Like, we never thought that... Like what Nobody Kyler was Murray, how we were like, mm-hmm. eh, is he going to be able to play in the league? Cam, Cam he's New- a tank. Cam Newton was more of like, hmm, is his personality going to fit in this league? Is his yeah. off the field issues going to fit in this league? Yeah, Cam Newton's a tank. No mm-hmm. one doubted that he was going to survive a few hits, and he has survived quite a few. Yes, hits. the most out of and, everybody, and a car um, accident. Yep. And, and Superman. he's doing just fine. But yeah, I mean, it's just one of those situations where you draft a quarterback. And then you draft another quarterback soon after. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that I'm saying Cam Newton, therefore Kyler Murray can't be successful because I think Cam Newton's a very successful quarterback, um, especially this coming year. It is an odd year after all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, it's saying look at Jimmy Clausen. Look at his career and what happened. That's what you're going to end up doing to Josh Rosen mm-hmm. potentially. You'll probably get more trade value because Josh Rosen's a better quarterback than Jimmy Clausen was just as a prospect. Yeah. But – you are driving down his value so much, and that's the problem. If you were going to trade him, trade him earlier. Mm-hmm. Trade him before, uh, but now they got Cliff Kingsbury there with his new offense, and I still think that drafting a quarterback, the franchise guy, the guy who represents your whole team, drafting one of him just to fit a somewhat gimmicky offense mm-hmm. is an issue. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think they – I don't think – Mm-hmm. The Cardinals should trade Josh Rosen. It's like I was telling you before the podcast when I was starting my next mock draft for us next week, I had a hard time at number one deciding who I was going to put there because the whole thing for me is when I do a mock draft, there's some people that do mock drafts differently. There's some people that want to be right. Mm-hmm. I look at it as, okay, I am this team's GM. I am drafting for this team alone. Yeah. Who am I I don't taking? care about trades. I don't care about trades. I don't care about, like, oh, I like this guy better than the Jets, so I'm not going to have the 49ers take him at two. No. I am drafting for this team. Who do I pick? And for me, when it comes to the Cardinals, I look at this team and I go, you have way too many needs to take Kyler Murray at number one. Like, it Who's going to protect him? It would be different if it's like, okay, this team had good weapons, had mm-hmm. an offensive line, and Josh Rosen didn't play up. But that's not the case. I still remember I have kept this tweet saved because it's a great tweet. I got to give the hat tip to our own Sean Anderson for finding it because he sent it to us. And it's from uh, Ben Fennell, 
and it says Josh Rosen was sacked 17 times in other in under 2.5 seconds, most in the NFL. 17 sacks essentially before you can five step with a hitch. Holy moly. And then he replied to it and said, means your O-line is getting shredded and you aren't seeing slash picking up blitzers. LOL dot 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 Josh. And I look at that and I go, well, that means Kyler Murray's not going to have success unless you're mm-hmm. and the Kyler Murray apologist will be like, yeah, but he's more mobile. He'll run quicker. No, it just means he'll get hit sooner. Like, and he'll get break hit a little because later. He's small. Exactly. And for me, I look at this and I go, mm-hmm. if the, like the question seems dumb in a sense of like, if you're going to take Kyler Murray, number one, trade Josh Rosen. Yes. Don't keep both of them on your team. Although but there is an argument for that. There is an argument. I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, if you're going to draft Kyler Murray, you're going with Kyler Murray, get him out. Because Josh Rosen, it's not like a Mahomes, Alex Smith situation. It's not mm-hmm. a Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre situation. Well, These are the both younger quarterbacks. The argument for that, that it does it, have some value. It's more of a Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins situation. No, that's not the argument I'm trying to make. The mm-hmm. argument is that you keep them and you wait until that other quarterback gets injured. You keep them both on your team in week four when, let's say, Patrick Mahomes gets mm-hmm. injured, but the Chiefs or, have a really good dr- Or Joe Flacco gets injured. Joe Flacco something. could be a Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Could be just somebody who is on a good team right now. This team is ready to make that move. They can get into the playoffs. They can mm-hmm. win a Super Bowl. And all of a sudden he gets injured and you say, well, we have a, uh, a good quarterback in Josh Rosen. Do you want the next Nick Foles? Because mm-hmm. we'll give him to you. There's the argument there is essentially that his trade value can go up if you keep him. I get but that. But then you're dependent on an injury. I get that, but also with me in my head, I look at this draft and I look at the needs oh, of yeah. the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, there's no there's no reason when you look at needs, there's no excuse for the Arizona Cardinals to take Kyler and Murray. Even in that first round, even in that second round. Mm-hmm. Like to me, if the Raiders called me up and said, you can have the fourth and our cowboy pick. Done deal. I'm, I'm putting the paperwork through. Because I'm getting two yeah. first-rounders for the price of one. And I'm going to be at four. Which means the Raiders are trading up. They're going to be taking Kyler Murray. So that's probably Kyler Murray at one. Then the 49ers will probably go Nick Bosa at two. Because they really need a pass rusher. Then the Jets will most likely go with... Um, Josh Allen at three or trade, so that's another quarterback. That means I'm looking at either Quinn and Williams or I get to choose between Josh Allen and Quinn and Williams if a team traded up with the Jets Mm -hmm. to take another quarterback. Yeah. Like, I'm getting pieces that can help this team now with Josh Rosen. For sure. Compared to taking a quarterback and kind of kicking that other like kicking the yeah. other needs down well, the line. The when you look at the needs, I mean this is one this is one of the few spots on the team where there isn't a need. You have mm-hmm. a quarterback. You have a good quarterback. You just don't have anything around him so he's not playing as well as he could. Yeah. Um so yeah, it to me it just doesn't make sense. Should they trade mm-hmm. him? Only if they are set on drafting Kyler Murray and actually do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the thing that's never made too much sense to me is for the Arizona Cardinals, you guys are the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. You don't need all the mystery. You don't need the smoke screen. Nick Bosa is my pick. Nick Bosa is my Mm -hmm. pick. And the reason why is um, I kind of had this thought today. of You can argue Quinn and Williams, but I would take Nick Bosa. Because, yes, you have Terrell Suggs. And if you look at rlads.com, they have Terrell Suggs on the defensive line on the end. And you've got Chandler Jones on the other end. You might be saying, well, Ricky, you don't need another defensive end. But you can double, take one. Double not so fast. Um, Dave says, I believe it was Dave, says I've never said this. I say this all the time. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there are two positions. Or no, it was Brandon said I never say this. And I was like. Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There are two positions that are the most important in football. Mm-hmm. One's your quarterback. Yeah. Two's a pass rush. And mm-hmm. you already have a quarterback. Why not go and get a pass rush? You can move Terrell Suggs to the outside linebacker. So for me, you're moving him to weak side linebacker to be on the outside, and you're putting Nick Bosa there on the defensive mm-hmm. end. And now you have three pass rushers 
instead of just two. And that at number one overall, that's conventional draft logic. Mm -hmm. You're either getting someone who throws those touchdown passes or is hitting the guy throwing the touchdown passes, Mm -hmm. you know, to stop him from doing so. That's typically like your sure thing, number one overall, Mm -hmm. maybe an offensive lineman every now and then. Um, But you want someone who's going to be one of those difference makers. Mm. Quarterbacks are difference makers. Pass rushers are difference makers. It's that easy. And it also is easy with a Bosa. It's going to be like the best player in the draft. Yeah. One of the best players in the draft. And I mean, if you look at it this way, like let's say Josh Rosen is worth a second round pick. The Giants are your best value. They're at 37. Mm -hmm. Um, The Broncos are at 41. The Dolphins are at 48. And the Redskins are at 46. So, I mean, you're not getting... You can get a you can nail a pick in the second round. There have been like look at early on in like the thirty seven range. Yeah, that's always going to be good. Look at there. Dallas, what they did. Yeah. They had oh, I think it was um, Jalen Smith. I always forget his name. Um, Notre Dame linebacker tore his ACL in his bowl game. They mm. picked him up, steal because they were able. But to just injury is here. the steal. Yeah. yeah, injury was that steal. But we have seen mm-hmm. teams. Hit in the second round. So, I mean, you, yeah. it's not like it's a bad pick. I just, I don't see the reason in drafting Kyler Murray number one and trading Josh yeah. Rosen for it a second. It doesn't truly improve your team. Mm-hmm. It keeps your team exactly where it is. Yeah. And I mean, I get the other side of like, oh, keep them both. And then you can trade maybe a Josh Rosen when a quarterback gets injured. But how does that help you this season? I know people are going to say, well, Ricky. We're not expecting the Cardinals to win the Super Bowl next year. Very true. But when you're a head coach like Kingsbury, you can't sit there and be complacent. You can't sit there and go, hey, after one year, I'll be safe. Look at the guy that just was there before you. Yeah. One year and he got fired. I would hope that he has a little bit more assurances that he'll be kept around. But it's also with the head coach. He's not the one making the draft pick. Mm -hmm. So if they're taking Kyler Murray... They are, in my eyes, saying you will be around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily John Gruden style, but you're going to have at least two or three years. We're giving you what you want because we believe in you. Technically, you could say they did that for Steve Wilkes and still fired him. Hey, we are you, giving you, you your yourself, quarterback. You yourself believe I, that they didn't, t- that they weren't giving him a chance. I, I don't think they gave him an actual chance. I completely, I, I don't think they gave him a chance. Mm-hmm. I think that at, at they brought the, him in to fail. At the time, I was like, I really don't know how this is going to pan out mm-hmm. because it kind of seemed like it was just the last of like, oh, we got we got to hire someone. Oh, uh, this guy. Like that's what it seemed like to mm-hmm. me. And then obviously seeing Steve Wilkes coach, it was kind of like, whoa, I'm over my head here. Yeah. And towards the end of the year, I was kind of an advocate for him to get fired. Yeah, I, to me it's just that I don't believe that the Arizona Cardinals actually really cared or believed that much in Steve Wilkes. They were mm-hmm. ready to get rid of Steve Wilkes by like week six, mm-hmm. uh, if not sooner really. Um, so, yeah, to me with Kingsbury, if they're going to – replace the quarterback they just drafted last year Mm -hmm. with a new quarterback that is drafted purely to fit this air raid kind of scheme that they have. Uh, Not a pure air air raid, but that is a we have confidence in you. You, Mm -hmm. you You are here for a reason. We went and got you. We are giving you the pieces that you need to make this successful. Question. Two Mm -hmm. questions. First off, the could you see the New England Patriots – Trading, let's say, the 32nd overall pick for a Josh Rosen. Maybe. Where, like, and maybe to me, that mm-hmm. might be the best deal the Cardinals can get. Because it's like, okay, we can draft someone and get a 50 year option on them yeah. instead of having to do in the second. The main question I wanted to ask you is looking at Josh Rosen, let's say he does get traded. Out of all the teams looking at him, out of all the teams he could be traded for, mm-hmm. you before we recorded was like, if he gets traded, you kind of want Josh Rose. Like, you're going to be pulling for Josh Rose. Of course. I will, too. Because basically it's going to be, I want you to stick it to the Cardinals. Definitely. For trading you. They gave up on you. We want you to do well. Which team do you think he has the best chance to be successful with? And how does he really fit with the teams looking at him? Of teams that need quarterbacks, which one do I think he'll be most successful with? Let's think about it. Um, of the teams that need quarterbacks, I think I have to say the Giants. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. He's got support uh, with Saquon Barkley, an mm-hmm. amazing player. 
Uh, the offense could be a little bit better. They just got rid of OBJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the defense is good enough. It, you know, they're not an amazing team. None of these teams are going to be amazing teams mm-hmm. where we're sitting there going, oh, easily he's going to the playoffs. Yeah. But they're going to be teams where it's like, well, you're pretty close. Mm-hmm. You're going to be in contention probably this year, and then next year you might actually make it. Yeah. Especially with a guy like Pat Shermer to to work with a young quarterback – and Josh Rosen, that has potential to be a very, very good match. No, yeah, that's the the two teams I would think about. The Giants are my clear mm-hmm. number one because not only do they have the best team around him on the offense because, like, I look at the Redskins. The Redskins might be my second option. Because, they probably like, would be my second option, too. They've got too, the coaching staff that can not be great. successful with him. Um, the question is, would Case Keenum – be part of that deal. I saw an article where there's a rumor where Case Keenum would be a part of the deal and they would basically flip Case Keenum for I hope Case Josh hasn't bought Rosen. a house yet. And Case Keenum would then be backing mm. up Kyler Murray. But like the wide receivers don't really kind of yeah. impress me in Washington. I mean Adrian Peterson was good last year, but like Adrian Peterson's not no young Saquon Barkley. Yep. And then just the Dolphins. I don't know what to expect from Flores as head coach of that yeah. team. And I don't like the weapons out there in Miami. I don't like the wide receiver weapons. I don't like the, like, yeah, Kenyon Drake is good, but, like, I just, I'm not impressed with that team overall. And then you got the Broncos where it's like, I just, they're a young team. Joe Flacco's there. Josh Rosen. Like the Bron- That's just a bad combo, Joe Flacco and Josh Rosen. Well, and plus it's what, that's another one, too, of, like, the, Dolphins and the Broncos are in the same situation of defensive head coaches. What are we going to see from their offensive coaches? Mm -hmm. Because obviously, like in uh, Denver, Vic Fangio is going to have nothing to do with the offense. He's just going to let Scargello kind of run that offense and kind of have his way with it. Kind of like how Nagy had nothing to do with the defense when Vic Fangio was with the Bears. Fangio did everything with the defense. And Nagy did everything with the offense. That's kind of how it's going to be in Denver. But Fangio will deal with the defense instead mm-hmm. of the offense. I, I just think purely that if you trade for a guy like Josh Rosen, it's because you want him mm-hmm. to play right now. You're, but, you're not going to go ahead and say, Joe, you know, you play first and then we'll see about Josh Rosen. I don't know. I could see if the if the Broncos trade for him, mm. they're going to ha- – I see it as a Joe gets this year – and then he's gone for sure after this year. No, I, I can't see it. Not a guy who was just a top pick last year. Mm. You're going to trade a second for him, probably. Uh, it, it's too Which would be the 41st overall pick. Yeah, you, you, you draft a guy like that, a guy who can start, mm-hmm. he's going to be starting. Yeah, I to me, out of them, though, the Giants would be. And then that's interesting. If the Giants trade the 37th for Josh Rosen, mm-hmm. then they got two picks in the first round. They don't even need to take a quarterback. They got their well, quarterback. Well, they just got one, yeah. They can take defense at six and maybe like an offensive weapon, like a wide receiver for them at 17. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think. Number one, should the Cardinals trade Josh Rosen? Number two, who do you think he'd be traded to? And then number three, where do you think he'd have the most success if he did get traded? Let us know what you guys are thinking down below in that comment section. And, Mark, let's close out the podcast taking a look at the Cincinnati Bengals or the Cincinnati Bungles or, if you're Brandon Swanson, the Cincinnati Bengales. But before we do that, something I forgot to do for the Josh Rosen segment that I will do here is make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. We redid all of our tiers, bronze, silver, and gold. Go and check those out. Also, every dollar that you guys help us out with this year is going towards our new studio that we need desperately. So go ahead and check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast to help us out. And Mark, let's take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Very team kind of we've mentioned this podcast could be a sneaky team yeah. um, to take a quarterback in the first round. I'll do a little setup here. This article coming from Sporting News, but they've got some Bleacher Report and some credible sources in here. Where The first one is from a report on Bleacher Report that said, there's talk around the league that Cincinnati is looking to select a quarterback with the number 11th pick in this April's draft. 
Then later on in the article, they say that Zach Taylor, now head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, said this to the Cincinnati Inquirer. I know Dalton Smart. I followed his whole career. He's a great fit for what we have. We are going to do. I know all about his background. I probably never pictured I was going to coach him, but I'm very fortunate he's the quarterback here, and I'm excited to work with him. Here's the thing I want to ask you. Should the Bengals draft a first-round quarterback at 11? Because Andy Dalton, although Zach Taylor says that, and it kind of sounds like a vote of confidence, Andy Dalton is done after this year. He's got next year. His contract is over. If you're the Bengals, do you draft a quarterback at number 11? Well, in our last mock draft, I actually had the Daltons go with a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think I said the Daltons. I had the Bengals the Daltons. go with a quarterback. The Cincinnati Daltons. Uh, he might he might be able to make that happen if he wins them a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here's the thing with Andy Dalton. I mean, he's a good quarterback. But he's not necessarily a great quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he he's one of those guys where he's going to throw probably a little too many interceptions to make you happy, but he's also going to throw a decent amount of touchdowns. Not a crazy amount of touchdowns, mm-hmm. but a pretty good amount. He's a guy who, if he's got a good team around him, he'll be really good. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that in years like 2016, 2013, when he's been really, really good. Uh, the problem is you don't always have that, and the Bengals definitely right now don't have that. Uh, so they don't have that. Next season, he's going to turn 32, uh, so he's definitely up there in age. If you look at it to where you have a quarterback you draft in the first round, you got five years of this quarterback. If maybe one year goes by, two years go by, all of a sudden Andy Dalton's like 33 years old. That's kind of old. Not everybody gets to be Tom Brady playing in their 40s. Mm-hmm. Uh Especially when you got a guy like Andy Dalton, which has been good but not amazing. We've seen quarterbacks who we didn't think uh, would get shipped end up getting shipped, like a uh, an Alex Smith, mm-hmm. you know, getting kind of moved off. Uh, you know, Tannehill's a little bit of a different situation, but there were plenty of people who didn't expect that to happen. Mm-hmm. It does happen. These quarterbacks who you just kind of associate with the franchise do eventually get moved uh, quite often. Andy Dalton hasn't done enough for the team in recent memory for this new coaching staff to be completely sold on him. I think that for the Bengals, they are completely dependent on what else happens. If Kyler Murray is still there, they might take a Kyler Murray. Uh, If their number two guy is still there, like a Dwayne Haskins, or if it's Drew Locke, there's a good chance they would take that guy. But mm-hmm. if it gets to those two guys being gone and all of a sudden yeah. they're like, oh, well, now we got to go with Daniel Jones or whatever, they're probably not going to go with quarterback number three. Mm-hmm. But if one of their top guys is there, I think there's a good chance the Bengals actually do it. See, I am leaning towards no. Don't take one at 11. Although earlier in this podcast I said that I could see Dwayne Haskins being a pick at 11, and that's the lowest he goes. If I am the Bengals, I'm not touching a quarterback with my 11th pick. And the reason why is, especially if the guy that I have had go to the Bengals in my mock draft for the past, I think it's been everyone, but it might have been like the last two or three. If Devin White is there at 11, the Bengals make that pick, in, in my mind. If I'm the Bengals GM, I make that pick because... To me, I even look at it this way, and I know that you're playing with fire when you do this, but look at these quarterbacks that have recently been drafted. Patrick Mahomes only needed a year. He was a year under Alex Smith. Boom. Now he's starting. Baker Mayfield comes in. Not even a full year. Two games. He's starting. Look at Lamar Jackson. Half a season. He is starting. Mm -hmm. The way I look at it is Andy Dalton. If you're going to move on him, you do not have to move on him now. Like quarterbacks that we have seen with this kind of quarterbacks favored systems that we've seen in the NFL, we are past the days of Aaron Rodgers where, hey, we're going to draft him. You're going to sit for three years under Brett Favre, and then we're going to trade Brett Favre because you're going to take over. These quarterbacks are taking over much quicker 
because of the systems we have in sure. place. But you, then you're saying that you're going to be getting rid of a quarterback who will be turning 33 in that season you get rid of him. You're, you're so he's 30. Year. Yeah, he's 31 years old, going to mm-hmm. turn 32. If you keep him for one year, you do a Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes waited out a whole year. Yeah. Then that next year you say, all right, Andy, we're going to trade you just like uh, the Chiefs did with Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. Based off of that trade, we think we're probably going to get something pretty good out of you. Uh, see you later. You're 33. You're turning 33 pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Have a good one. You don't probably have that much left in the tank at that point. Well, and that's the thing where I feel like the Bengals mm-hmm. with me, I'm not taking a quarterback because I look at next year and next year I feel like the Bengals with Andy Dalton with Zach Taylor probably going to be in the similar situation. Going to be a top 15 pick. Could even be a top 10 pick. And I know this Cincinnati team, Cincinnati Bengal fans are going to tell us, well, guys, they were a 6-0 and team, and then injuries happened. And they fell off the face of the earth. And they like, were a good 6-0 and like, team. This they were was looking a, really good. This was a Bengal team that in the preseason, I kind of mocked and said, oh, they're going to be at the bottom. Like, they're going to be at the bottom of the division. It's not going to be close. I think I had them at four wins. And when they won their fifth game, Cincinnati Bengal fans let – me and Sean hear it, rightfully so, on our Bengals preview last summer. But the thing is, I don't see the Bengals being super successful this year. They could, they could, they were a good six and zero team. Like that could change with Zach Taylor. But I look at next year's draft, and we've got Tua, we've got Justin Herbert, who many people are forgetting about, where he was. At the beginning of this draft process, QB one, the QB one over Dwayne Haskins, and I feel if he would have came out, there would be like we would be having the discussion of him versus Kyler Murray, and people would probably be taking him number one overall because I I remember I said this on our first big board for the primetime podcast when I watched his film when the season was over, I was like holy shit he's got some cam in him. Like, he has that similar style to Cam Newton, and that is a quarterback that's going to be next year. You've got Jake Fromm from Georgia, which could also be coming out next year. Jacob Eason, we're going to see what he does now that he gets Mm -hmm. to play with Washington. But But really, those top three are what I'm looking at. All that's great, but... It depends on what their quarterback number one is. If they Mm -hmm. love Drew Locke, they think he's the best quarterback in the draft and he's there, they draft him. Same thing with Dwayne Haskins. Same thing with Kyler Murray. And Whoever they like the most, if he's there, they're probably going to take him. And it depends on, with that, it depends Mm -hmm. on what's there. If If, like, Devin White is not there, then I rethink it. Like, if Drew Locke is there Mm -hmm. at 11, but Devin White is not, then I rethink from if they Yeah, if they like him. I mean, it all depends. (coughs) They're going to have their board, and they're going to yeah. say not just who's the best quarterback, mm-hmm. who's the best linebacker. It's going to be which one of these guys do we think is the best player in the draft. Yeah. And also, do we think that there are other really good linebackers mm-hmm. that we can draft and we'll be okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that that's just on them of they're going to look at their board and say who's available, and that's the kind of thing I think Taylor was saying it where he was saying – just because we have a quarterback doesn't mean we throw out the rest of our board. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what it is. They have it ranked, and they don't have it ranked so well that they're going to say nothing is better than Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. Um, they might say none of these quarterbacks are better than Andy Dalton. Yeah. But there's a good chance they say there's one of these guys we would be willing to take. Yeah, I just, with me and the Bengals, I'm, yet again, putting myself in the shoes of, like, if I'm the GM, and of course... Myself and their front office are different. But if I'm the GM, I look at it, and here's what my board looks like at 11. Devin White's my number one. Clellan Farrell will probably be my number two. Devin Bush is my number three. Yeah. And then it's like Mm -hmm. maybe quarterback-wise, Drew Locke is in there. Like if he's available there, all right, we have a discussion at 11. But otherwise, that's the board I look at because – I am kind of okay, and yet again, this is assuming they're going to give Zach Taylor a leash of like, hey, we're not going to fire you after year one. We're not going to fire you after year two. Because I would be totally fine with going through this year without 
a quarterback behind Andy Dalton, just yeah. seeing what happens, and then taking a run at one of these other quarterbacks, even if I have to trade up to do it next year. I just think that you know it's nice to have your your board, Ricky, mm-hmm. but you know you're saying you're putting yourself in the shoes of these those teams, mm-hmm. but that's your board. It's yeah. not their board. No, I know. So for that, we don't know who they like the most, but it, to me, it mm-hmm. still stands. If they have a quarterback that they like more than other people, they're going to draft them. Mm-hmm. Andy Dalton got hurt last year, and the team was really good last year for mm-hmm. a while. This is a team that could make a playoff run. Mm-hmm. They could go ahead and do it. And I don't think that there's that many holes on that team to where they would be like, oh, if we draft a quarterback, it's not the Arizona Cardinals. We're like, then we're really screwing over some other stuff. Yeah. They'll be fine. Uh, they could still make that happen. But here's the thing with that. Andy Dalton doesn't probably have that much longer, so they're definitely taking a quarterback Mm soon-ish, whether it's this year, whether it's next year. So what that says to me is at any time now in the next few years, they can draft a quarterback. If I'm not taking one this year, I'm taking one next year. So they are definitely definitely looking. There's Mm -hmm. no reason why they wouldn't. They have a quarterback who's, you know, he's on the uh, wrong side of 30 Mm -hmm. here, and they're going to go ahead and draft a guy when they have the guy who fits. Yeah, and that's why like I'm looking at their team, and I would say probably the biggest position of need mm-hmm. for them would be that linebacker position. Because um, like even at the offense, you look at it, and it's like you've got Tyler Bo- uh, Tyler Boyd, you've got A.J. Green, um, you've got your backfield of Mixon and Giovanni Bernard, um, which are good pieces you have. Now, I know Tyler Eifert, one-year deal coming back, people are going to – kind of see what's going on. Is he going to be injury-prone again? Is he actually going to produce for us this year? But I look at this team and I go, you're right. Like, they're not the Cardinals. They don't have holes all over the team. Um, I just – I kind of look at it and I go, with me, depending on – it's it all depends on what's there. Um, if Drew Locke is there, maybe it's a different conversation. Maybe they do like a Daniel Jones. My question that I'm going to ask you – is let's say, let's kind of move it. Not just select a quarterback in the first round. Should the Bengals trade up for a quarterback? No, that they shouldn't do. Don't trade up. Don't give extra things up because your team's not perfect. Mm -hmm. There's other things you can do with those picks. You just sit at the guys there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Take them. Or could you see them, I'm going to throw this out there. Could you see them being a team that is kind of like Baltimore last year. Hey, at 11, we're going to pick our defensive guy, but then we're going to take a second-round pick, try to move up late first round to take a guy like Will Greer. If that's the guy they like, sure, Mm -hmm. but I would be surprised on that case. I wouldn't be surprised if they take a quarterback in like the second or third Mm -hmm. round. I can't imagine them trading up to do it, though. Uh, take Take a guy just to have a quarterback that you can kind of work on and develop and see if he turns out in a little bit. But if you trade up for one of these guys in a quarterback class that's considered weak mm-hmm. anyways, that's kind of an issue, especially when you have other things well, you can do with those picks. The only way I would trade up for, like, let's say, because Will Greer is kind of like the guy that people have at five. The only reason I'm trading up for him is because I want to draft him in the first round to get that fifth-year option on him. Which I get, but I think if you're drafting one of these guys in the second or third, mm-hmm. you're drafting one of these guys knowing that there's a good chance you draft another guy in the first next year okay uh so it's you know not, you're gonna have a Steelers situation which is yes we got like, rudolph Will but is not like, we don't really care we'll be willing to draft a quarterback if one's there so you're like that saying that will greer is closer to like a mason rudolph not a lamar jackson we're like Definitely. lamar jackson is like hey we're drafting him he's gonna be our guy behind joe flacco but we're not taking a quarterback next year you're drafting a guy saying this will be the future of our team yeah where you get a guy like rudolph or a guy like will mm-hmm. greer and you're saying Let's work and see what we can do with him, mm-hmm. but we'll we'll see. We like the pieces. We're not sure if he's ready. And I know your big point has been we don't know what they're thinking. Yep. What are you thinking though? I know I gave my board. So if I'm the my GM, my thing is still that if the guy you like is there, draft him. I would take a Dwayne Haskins. Okay. I wouldn't take a Drew Locke. Okay. Besides, let's say Haskins is there. Mm-hmm. What's your board kind of look like? Like, give me three prospects. That's like one, two, three well, of what I'm thinking there. I mean, I like you said, it all depends on the things, and our boards are, are different based on yeah. the drafts. Uh, would Perfect. I take a Devin White? Yes, I would take a mm-hmm. Devin White before this. Uh, but to me, I 
I don't really buy the big fall on Dwayne Haskins. Mm-hmm. If Dwayne Haskins is there for me and, you know, a guy like Devin White's not, I'm taking a Dwayne Haskins. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll be good. You can work on those minor things that people wanted to work on. You can work on that and improve it, and then you got a better player in a year or two when he mm-hmm. starts playing. And if people truly are a little bit uh, down on Dwayne Haskins, he's not going to mind sitting and waiting. No. But even if he does, who cares? He's on a five-year contract. He doesn't Mm -hmm. have a choice. Yeah. And I mean, if Dwayne Haskins gets picked at 11, then I would say Andy Dalton is going to get Alex Smith. Mm -hmm. Where, sit, hey, Dwayne, sit this year. You'll be playing next year. Like, Andy Dalton will be moved in the offseason, and you won't have to worry about it. One question I do want to ask you, because I don't think we've talked about this. Maybe we have, and I am just completely blanking on it. Okay. Zach Taylor, is he going to be successful either this year with the uh-huh. Bengals or throughout his tenure? I think he definitely can because the Bengals are a good team. Mm-hmm. Uh, without an injury, the Bengals were a playoff team, and Marvin Lewis was coming back. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that he's got a very good chance of being a successful coach here. Because like when he was hired, the thing that I thought in my head was my first mm-hmm. thought was, all right, another McVay connection. Like yeah. We're going with the McVay thing. And I just, for me, was wondering – Hmm. Is he going to be the one that pans out? Like, it's not like I have more faith in him than Kingsbury. He's in the best situation for sure. I mean, he's got a team around him. Yeah. Um, And and honestly, that's kind of what matters most of the time. mm -hmm. And we'll see this team. This division is also kind of interesting, too, because the Bengals will need to compete with a better Browns team, where I heard kind of the best comparison to this Browns team on Good Morning Football, where. They made the comparison that the Browns coming into this year are kind of like the 49ers of last year. Super lot hyped of, up. A lot of hype around them. A lot of disappointment on we'll um, the future <laughs> maybe or on the horizon. Maybe someone gets injured uh, and they kind of sputter out. I mean, that's what happened to the 49ers. Super but teams. Super teams are dangerous. I looked at that and I went, holy crap, he's like, he's right. Because like the 49ers, I bought into that hype last year. You bit hard And I that. might be buying into the Brown hype also, but like the Ravens should be a the better Browns team. The Browns hype is more real than the 49ers hype. 49ers were just, mm-hmm. they've got a pretty quarterback. They're well, going to be amazing. The Browns have more more of a complete team. The mm-hmm. only thing that the 49ers have, I would say, is a, pretty quarterback. a better coach. I would say Kyle Shanahan is better than Freddie Kitchens. Well, we haven't seen Freddie Kitchens yet. I, I get that. Um, but I if, mm-hmm. if Kyle Shanahan was on this Browns team as the head coach, oh, boy, um, would they be a scary team this year. But, yeah, I mean. You say that, but we've never seen Shanahan be successful, really, in the NFL as a head coach. I mean, didn't isn't this the only year? Wasn't last year the only year he was a head coach, though? That's my point, though. Okay. So far, we've only seen failure. I know, but his quarterback got injured. So, I mean. Sure, but he's an offensive coach. He should be able to get something out and of another I quarterback. Mean, he kind of resurrected uh, Dave's boy, Kittle. Well, everybody he loves kind him, of, Kittle. He kind of made him uh, mm-hmm. put him on the map and said, here he is. But, yeah, the Bengals will be interesting. That's what happens when you don't have other weapons to throw the ball to. Because the Browns and Ravens are kind of on an up. The Steelers are kind of on a down, and we'll see if the Bengals stay there at three or they move into – one or two with the Browns and the Ravens. But that's going to do it for the onside kick this week. Make sure to let us know what you think down below about the Bengals, about Josh Rosen, will he get traded, and about Dwayne Haskins and his possible slide in the NFL draft. Make sure to check us out on patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. That's how you help support us. Make sure we can keep doing these videos for you each and every week and each and every day. Also, make sure to go on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and give us that five-star rating. It really helps us out, gets us into the ears of more people and we really appreciate it for all the ones that have gone out there and given us that five star rating but for ricky widmer at ricky widmer for at the mark weber dub them ease most valuable podcast is at most valuable pod thank you for watching on youtube thank you for listening on podcast services around the world and as always have a good day everybody